All right, uh, been asked to discuss how I get uh, a locomotive that looks like this, which is basically unweathered, to look like this, which is the 567 weathered, to look like a locomotive that's been out and used for a while. So I use both Atlas and Proto 2000 locomotives. In the case of the 567, I use the Proto 2000. Uh, 569 is the one you can buy all of them, but I always change the numbers on them. So the way I change the numbers is either I take and paint green over where the old number was and decal a new number like I did right there, or on the Atlas models I can take a Q-tip and solve a set, and you basically paste the solve a set over where the numbers are and you use a Q-tip, and at first it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but after a little bit of time you'll see it start turning a little yellow in the solve a set, and then you'll blot it out and you'll get these faded off and eventually those numbers come off and then you can renumber this locomotive because almost every one of these GP7s I have started out as 561 but I have 561 through 565 now and on my layout all from the same locomotive with the same number. The other thing you do is you paint over the uh, number boards on them and then put new decals for the numbers on them when you put the new things. Uh, the other thing I do before I start doing the weathering is I usually put the uh, spark arresters on here. So the spark arresters on them, some of them if you look at them have a spark arrest that's kind of a screen. So I take this evergreen uh, C channel and uh, I cut that two scale feet long and then I use this uh, mesh here. And this isn't, this piece isn't big enough. It's not the two feet, but I have a whole pile of it right here. It's from Scale Scenics. And I basically cut it a little bit wider than this U channel and then I glue it with re actual glue, regular solvent cement and that makes that uh, aluminum melt into this C channel. And then I fold it over the sides and then I glue it to the top of the uh, smoke uh, exhaust stacks on, on the locomotive. So that's one type of main central had. The other type of main central had was this uh, plated one. So the 580 here has a plated one and these actually come from Cal Scale. And Cal Scale makes up its part number, number 190 TAC 440. And basically you cut off the old uh, exhaust stack and then you drill a hole and you can put these cow scale, scale uh, spark arresters in. So once I've completed all the detailing on it, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, uh, move the... Okay, first step is you move all the handrails obviously when you're starting to do this. So the next thing I'm going to do after that is I put the new numbers on it, so I decal the new numbers on, I put the new numbers on the number boards and then I spray paint the whole model with dull coat and the dull coat protects everything that's been on the model and protects the decals on there before you uh, uh, go start weathering. Another thing on these uh, Proto 2000 GP7s, if you're doing the low series uh, of the GP7s, the fuel tanks on them are smaller than the uh, full size fuel tank and what I do on these uh, Proto 2000 ones, I actually cut the fuel tank off and discard it because this right here is the actual width of the fuel tanks on them as they were uh, purchased. So just another little thing there. The next thing I do is if when you get the models, it's obviously all black here, so you want this all weathered to look like. And what I use is Railroad Tie Brown, and I've got Model Master here, but Flopo used to make it, and I'm, I'm sure you can find it in a couple other different vendors out there. And I basically paint the trucks the fuel tank, the air tanks, all this is painted that and I just paint it with a brush to that brown and it gives you a lighter color than a flat black, it gives you a flat color and the other thing this does is when we go back later on and we use pastels it gives us something to stick to. So that's what I do to the hole and then this one I haven't done it to yet but the front of the pilot I'll usually do that in the same color. I can see in the back here that it'll do the same color and that gives you that uh, more of a close color or base color for uh, what the trucks and the fuel tanks look with the dirt and grime that gets on them. So the next thing I do is I'll wash the tops of the hood and uh, so the 580 here I've just started putting a little bit of a wash on there but I'll end up taking a wash and a wash is a very uh, thinned out black paint and I'll just take all the lines and, and all this area on top of the hood and I'll get it kind of a, a wash of black around in this area right here. And uh, you want it very thin. It, I've actually got it thick right around with the exhaust arc because that's usually where most of the soot goes. And then you kind of make it a much uh, finer wash on the way out. And that wash is just to give, again, start getting rid of that uh, cover, color of the uh, locomotive. 
The other thing I'll do is, a, and 5A is a good example here, if there's paint faded where it's been worn away and on a lot of these uh, green and uh, maroon locomotives as they got older, the paint would fade away. So I've used uh, a, another yellow that, that mixed a color that, you know, either yellow ochre if you're using oils, and this one I did use oils, or you can just take a yellow that's close to deluxe gold and, and put it on there. And it doesn't have to be exactly that color because by the time you're done weathering, and I'll, I'll tell you what I did in this one, for the little pieces here and there that I did in this one, I just used harvest gold. But by the time you're done weathering it, you're not going to tell that that color is that different anyway. So after you've added whatever you want for any kind of warm, spot, warm spots on the locomotives, then the next thing you want to do is you want to lighten the color of the locomotives. So all these, when they come from the factory, is a very dark green. And just like any paint, when it comes out, it's a very, uh, very clear color. But as the sun hits it over time and heat and everything, that color fades or lightens. So easiest way to do that is with an airbrush if you have an airbrush and this whole model has been sprayed with a very very fine light spray of white over it and that gives you a lighter color of green it brings the yellow and makes it less defined and, and kind of gives an overall washed out look to the paint scheme the uh so that gives you a base there where it basically lights up that color Once I've done that uh, white spray coat, I'll come back and either spray it with gloss coat or uh, dull coat. And again, you can buy them in these little rattle cans. I don't worry about using. I use the airbrush very little these days. A lot of my paint is done with paint brushes and uh, pastels and stuff like that for weathering. But uh, and then spray cans. The, uh, get the airbrush out all the time. It's just uh, somewhat tedious. So if I can do it with a spray can, I'll do that instead of that using the. Uh, airbrush so the next thing I do is I go in and all the panels and I pin wash them so what I did on this model here is you take and again my favorite color here railroad tie brown and you make another very thin uh, very wet paint and then you just basically the gloss coat when you go down here along all these panel lines it's going to have that color flow down there and that color will stick around those panel lines to give you some more definition there and give you a little bit darker stuff like that so that gives you a more definition where the doors and that detail on it. The other thing I do is all these vents, if you look at these vents on the car body, they're always very dark looking. So what I do is I take all these and again, I do a wash and I do it just in that area where those vents are and give them a little darker shade to them. And it's very noticeable in all these locomotives. And then the other thing I do is I'll go in here to the vents for the uh, dynamic brake and the other vents on the car body up here and I'll also put a dark color in there, black or, or, or Again, railroad tie brown, just depending on uh, what, what I happen to want to work with that day. So at this point, the locomotives had all the paint and all the uh, stuff that's going to get put on it. I've done a little wash down here on the bottom here because the oil and the grime uh, settles down there. The other thing to do is I do a wash on all the running boards. And that gives you that lighter color, that kind of a dirt and use mark on the uh, running boards where they walk in the walkways along the engine and gives it more color. But that's all that's all done with paint. But that's not where you get to this point right here. The last part of what I do is pastels. So you can buy a, I guess Bragdon's a model of pastels and you can use a, just get chalk and I've ground chalk up and used it as pastels. But uh, actually what I found out is my wife has these bare minerals uh, makeup and this stuff is outstanding it sticks very well and uh, so I've stolen some reddish and some brown colors from her and a, and a black onyx color from her and that's what I use for doing the pastel of all these locomotives and I've got a brush that I use specially for that it's just got a really rough banged up uh, tip on it and I thought I pulled it out here so I could show you but uh, apparently I did not So if you look at the tip of that brush, it's a it was started out as a stiff bristle brush, but I've used that for putting the chalks on. And basically, you just take a brush and you just put those chalks around. And actually, I'll show you with the black here. You just take some of that and you just spread it on the top of the hood and then brush it in there, and it kind of fills in, gives you that darker look. This 5.8 is going to have almost the whole top of the engine is a very dark black, very sooty from the photograph that I'm using to 
decal it or detail it with. So I'll end up doing the whole hood like this. So that's the pastel chalks. And again, the brush like that. The pastels, you don't want to put your hands on it when you've done that. The other thing I use is I use pastels to do the size of the engine to get some dirt and grime build up. So this is a very brown looking color here. And I use the same brush. I don't even bother changing it between colors. And I'll use that and I'll go along on these trucks. And that gives you that typical kind of a rusted muted brown color. So you can see where that color of the railroad tie brown is giving you a nice base here. And then this pastel you can just kind of dab on there and it gives you that look that trucks have typical of dirt a little bit of a rust color to them or and that gives you that that look to the trucks and you can use that same brown down at the bottom of the body here and I'll use that all along here eventually to, to weather this all out like I did on the 567 so a lot of this darker color up here in the front is really pastels that I've gone along there so after you've done all those pastels the last thing you're going to do with the model once you're satisfied with the look of it, and it's going to actually look darker and have more color to it before you spray the dull coat on. So if you think you put way too much pastels on there, usually that's not the problem. Because as soon as you hit it with this dull coat, that pastel color fades and gets uh, kind of bleated into it. So, you know, don't be worried about putting too much on there. And again, I used a photograph for this, and you guys saw how I posted it on Facebook. That photograph, I just basically followed the patterns of... Uh, black soot and uh, brown uh, colors that uh, were on the bottom of the body and then just basically tried to copy that and came out with this. In the front of the pilot you always hit that with a lot of dust because they get a lot of dust and mud it kicks up on them. So that's how I do it. It would take too long for me to actually physically go through one model and do it for you here but hopefully that will help you guys out that want to get that kind of a look to the locomotives or you can do the same thing with freight cars and uh, use YouTube I, uh, I'm always looking at stuff on YouTube to figure out different people's uh, weathering techniques and then try it out and if you've never done it before and you're afraid of it you know go go find a, a cheap Athern shell somewhere at a yard sale or something like that and just practice on it before you uh, put put the stuff to a locomotive that you uh, you spend a lot of money with and you want to just do some weathering and you can go as heavy as that or you can just do some very light weathering and uh, even a little bit of light weathering like the 408 here will have some light weathering on it but uh, you always notice all the grills I always black out the grills I haven't got down to the uh, car body vents here but those will be uh, turned darker too and then I will do a pin wash in here and then I'll do some light chalk back here and on the roof where the and these things actually get quite filthy when the uh, exhaust started getting on the bodies all right, and that's it for now.